There's just a handful of games that had a really big impact on my life and my personality. Games that made you feel a certain way. Some sort of unexplainable magic that glued me to the screen and made me addicted. And over the past few years, I was feeling like that magical gaming experience was slowly fading away. Thinking maybe, maybe I'm just too old. But then, I started playing Elden Ring. I've already played other From Software games. My favorite game of all time is in fact Bloodborne. Please release it on PC or, or remaster or whatever from please. But after playing Sekiro and Dark Souls 3, amazing games, don't get me wrong, I don't think they would manage to bring me that sort of full immersion again, like Bloodborne did. And when Elden Ring was announced, I was like, yeah, okay, uh, Dark Souls with open world sounds fun. But I don't think that would work that well with the usual FromSoft formula. But oh boy, I was so wrong. This game made me feel like a seven year old kid again. Literally every new location, every new discovery felt so special to me. And also every homeless guy could kick my ass, but that's that's not that important. My axe is so short! Personally, when I think about those games that stuck with me for all these years, there's mainly three things that combined together make that sort of magic happen. World building, atmosphere, and gameplay. Usually in other games you also have the fourth category which is story and characters, but after my first Elden Ring playthrough, for me personally this wasn't the case. And that's mostly because FromSoft games have a non-conventional way of storytelling which essentially translates in you asking what the fuck is going on, and you either finish the game five more times to solve the puzzle on your own, or watch all the Vatividia videos, which I immediately did by the way, after the final boss, in order to have a little understanding on what the story is about. The main story is absolutely amazing by the way, but but for a first playthrough, it isn't something I want to talk about, but more importantly, world building. This game has one of the most elaborate and immersive open worlds I've ever experienced. Not only it is absolutely beautiful, but it serves a specific purpose. Meaning if you ever see a castle miles away from the top of some mountain, you can literally go there because for sure that's not just some background for you to admire. Beautiful. Actually is beautiful, yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, look at that place, bro. Look at that place. It's a fantasy world that for some reason feels more real and interconnected than the real world. This is what makes you want to stay and explore and right turn to every pixel of this huge map because that exact pixel was made with more love than children are made nowadays. Every place, every shack, every church has a story to tell and very useful items to reward your curiosity. But of course, not before getting your, your ass kicked by some random drug abuser. That fleeing required. Oh, <gasps> that scared me. No way, dude, no, no. Speaking of drugs, don't, don't do them, okay? Don't do them, don't do drugs. I don't know what fucked up mind was able to create this world, the environments, and the enemies. The fuck are these, bro? <laughs> what the f But I couldn't stop admiring how visually stunning and sometimes disturbing the art design of this game is, which enhances the world exploration experience even more. On my first playthrough, I've discovered the areas way before I was meant to, and most importantly, I took routes that weren't even supposed to get me there. I should have come from this place, but I actually went around here, got here. I'm Doris the Explorer, my dude, and uh, I went the other way around. I got here. I've explored the map so much that at one point, when I finally got to the main quest bosses, I was absolutely bullying them. And I think this is the best way to reward people who say this game is too difficult. I could just watch this guy kill him. Get him, boy. He has more, more health than me. Now let's talk about the atmosphere. For me personally, atmosphere is the combination of world building and soundtrack. Now since atmosphere is very hard to explain or to describe, I think there's only one way to convince you that combining these two factors creates pure magic. Like you can you can screenshot every frame of those games like printed on a wall or something. And the music. Boy, they were cooking some high level cuisine with this music. Whenever you encounter a boss, it feels like you're joining some epic Lord of the Rings battle sequence. But at the same time, it manages to create an emotional connection between you and the enemy. Like the boss is expressing how it feels about fighting you through the music. 
Now let's talk about gameplay. And first of all, let's get a difficulty part out of the way. Yeah, this is a difficult game for someone who's never played a FromSoft title before. Yeah, you're going to die a lot. Are you kidding? What is this game? The ball is coming for me. What the fuck is this? But this is how I interpret difficulty in Elden Ring. I like to think about this game as a giant Lego set where you have to build a spaceship. Now you can make a basic ass spaceship with a few pieces and it's gonna get the job done for sure, but it's gonna suck. Or you can take your time collecting all the best pieces at your disposal and build a goddamn intergalactic destroyer 5000. This game is only difficult if you don't use the infinite tools it gives you to defeat your opponents. And by infinite tools, I really mean it. If Bloodborne was criticized for the lack of weapons, then Elden Ring is overwhelmingly full of weapons and buffs and sets and incantations and sorceries and talents and upgrades. And once you realize that, in Elden Ring, you are in fact the boss and these poor creatures just happen to stand in your way. Except Malenia. Bro, Malenia is just pure bullshit. Oh, what the f Stop, bro! Oh, nah, f Basically. Oh, f now, I gotta say, on my first playthrough, I kept it very simple, aka a big hammer equals bonk. So I missed a lot of these tools, but I do plan on playing it a second time, experimenting with the builds, just because there's so many playstyles you can create in this game. I also want to talk some minor flaws that in my opinion could have been improved, but it's not something that ruined my overall Elden Ring experience. First, I love Torrent, okay, I love it. it. Makes exploring the world so much easier and the double jump is just so damn cute. But sometimes controlling Torrent felt pretty clunky to me, like instead of riding a horse it felt like riding some chunk of butter. Not too smooth in my opinion, but nothing really game breaking. Second complaint is that some optional bosses were kinda recycled, like the dragons or the earth tree guardians or whatever they called. They're still fun to fight, but when you fight them for like 10 times throughout the game, kinda ruins that feeling that you got the first time you encountered the dragon and limgrave. Oh my god! Again, nothing crazy, but I wish those encounters were a little bit more unique or something. Now, despite all that, Elden Ring has a special place in my heart, and I can for sure say that From Software over delivered with this one. They could have created half of the game with hub locations and enemies, and this would still be a 10 out of 10 for me. But instead, they went all in, they kept cooking. And I'm very glad this is the product we got. But what do you think about the learning? And if you have some suggestions, I will be streaming my second playthrough live on this YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe and maybe check out these videos if you enjoyed this one.